Hello everyone. Today let us see about osseo integration. As the name suggests, it is about the bone implant connection or integration. It has been the buzzword in implantology and always the primary goal of implant installation. Brenner Mark in 2005 in the book of the osseo integration defined osseo integration histologically as the direct structural and functional connection between ordered living bone and the surface of a load bearing implant without intervening soft tissues let us move into the details how does bone heal after osteotomy and implant site preparation the sequence of events that follows can be compared to that of bone fracture healing the sequence of events include inflammatory reaction bone resorption release of growth factors and attraction of osteoprogenitor cells to the site by chemotaxis these osteoprogenitor cells then differentiate into osteoblast and deposit bone at the site extracellular matrix proteins like osteocalcin modulate the crystal growth but but osseo integration binding of bone to implant is not as easy as it sounds it requires specific conditions optimal for bone formation and wound healing first and foremost like a fracture site requires immobility for few weeks implant site also needs immobility that is immobility of an implant relative to the site for bone formation at the surface the first reaction following the site preparation is a mild inflammatory reaction it enhances bone healing but moderate inflammation and movement above the threshold limit is detrimental therefore the movements should be restricted within the threshold level that is 150 micrometer at the interface if it exceeds it may impair differentiation of osteoblast and fibrous scar tissue may form therefore to avoid mobility it is wise to avoid the occlusal loading the early in the early healing period another critical factor dealt is avoiding of overheating of bone the critical temperature should not exceed greater than 47 degrees celsius at an exposure time of 1 minute for bone cells if exceeded bone may become necrotic may remain non mineralized and can form scar tissue and get even sequestrated This is prevented by profuse irrigation of the implant osteotomy sites with gentle intermittent moderate speed drills and the third factor to be careful is microbial contamination strict aseptic methods during surgery can of can can avoid this now we saw the three most important factors determining the success of osseo integration first being the immobility of the implant site and avoiding excess occlusal loads in the initial healing period the second one is avoiding overheating third one being the avoiding of microbial contamination now let us move to what is happening at the site bone tissue damage and debris created by the osteotomy site preparation must be cleared up by osteoclasts for normal bone healing these multinuclear cells originally originate from the blood and can re- resorb bone at a pace of 50 to 100 micrometer per day the bone opposition and bone resorption usually occurs side by side and therefore there is a coupling between them a proper vascular supply and oxygen tension are needed for this coupling to occur if oxygen tension is poor the primary stem cells may differentiate into fibroblast form scar tissue and may lead to the implant failure that is non integration 
well what is the specific sequence of event the bone follows the first and foremost bone to be formed is woven bone it is quickly formed in the gap between the implant and bone it grows far of 100 micrometer per day in all directions the characteristics of woven bone include irregularity and random orientation of the collagen fibrils high cellularity and limited degree of mineralization and the disadvantage of woven bone is the biomechanical capacity of the woven bone is really poor that's why we are avi- avoiding any occlusal load in the early periods after several months the woven bone is replaced by lamellar bone lamellar bone comparatively is organized parallel layer of collagen fibrils are present and mineralization is relatively dense contrary to the fast growing woven bone lamellar bone formation occurs at a slow pace only a few microns but let us see two more terms primary stability and secondary stability what does they indicate they are usually a clinical term the primary stability of an implant is achieved at the time of surgical placement it depends on the implant geometry macro design that is whether the implant is an endosseous implant subperiosteal frame like implant or transmandibular implant whereas the secondary stability is achieved over time with healing and depends upon the implant surface micro design as well as the quantity and quality of the adjacent bone which will determine the percentage of contact between the implant and bone once osseo integration is achieved implants can resist and function under the forces of occlusion for many years but when we want to load a prosthesis immediately in one day or early in one to two weeks care must be taken to control against overload it is important to recognize that sites with limited primary stability or less bone to implant contact